is the Baika Viaduct, an elegant concrete S-shape bending its way for 850 metres through Tyneside in northeast England. The function of the new bridge is to carry part of a double-track metro railway, a novel public transport system in itself. As a pre-stressed segmental bridge, it merits attention as the first to be designed and built in the United Kingdom using the combination of cantilever construction and match-cast glued joints made with epoxy adhesive. Low-level continuous erection took the viaduct deck for nearly 500 metres across an urban area that includes two roads and a railway. The high-level section running over a deep valley in terrain with difficult access was built by the method of glued joints and cantilever construction. Many of the novel and technical features of the high-level erection are best explained by recalling key stages in the construction. Across the valley, four high-level double cantilevers were built to span the gap. Here, two are complete and one is about to start. The casting and erection of the individual segments required a sustained effort in high-quality engineering organisation and control. The constantly changing alignments, stresses, deflections and loads were calculated by computer for each step and monitored by the contractor and consulting engineers as work proceeded. Each double cantilever starts with a column. The erection program consisting of lifting, gluing and stressing 22 segments, 11 each side of the column, is a precise sequence with the growing structure built to retain its balance. segments are countercast in the contractor's casting factory on site. Accuracy is the key. The concept based on a series of glued joints means that surfaces have to match perfectly. This is done by countercasting each new segment against its predecessor and at the same time the curve of the deck is created by the angle at each joint. The many operations involved have been carefully planned and coordinated to ensure the casting of a new segment every day. In the preparation area, new cages are under fabrication to keep pace with the daily cycle. The segment cast yesterday, after it has been cured and surveyed, is moved to vacate the casting position. The previous segment, two days old, is ready for transfer to the stacking yard. As one box leaves at cycle end, another casting cycle begins. The empty pallet is transferred to the vacant casting position. The cage moves across from the preparation area to the casting machine for placing. The countercast segment is now set up for the approximate vertical and horizontal alignments. The side shutters are fixed with the segment in position but not finally aligned. Now, precise alignment takes place by jacking and other adjustments. Since the final erected alignment of a run of segments is determined by the projected casting alignment of every joint, the setting up of the countercast segment requires extremely accurate survey work. Concreting of today's segment can now begin. equipment was specially designed and fabricated for the project. The 
The casting day ends with the segment being covered and left to cure overnight at a controlled humidity and temperature. Next morning, the cycle restarts with some very accurate surveying. Any errors will produce rapidly escalating deviations. This work determines the precise positions of the two segments relative to each other. Segments for both low and high level erection are carefully stored in the stacking yard. A segment weighs about 40 tonnes and due to the match casting and the cable profiles, each one is unique in its position in the structure. The viaduct required a total of 253 such segments. Erection work initially began on the low level section. This continuous front method involves the use of large temporary props to limit the construction bending moments. Prop settlements are critical and were carefully monitored. Simultaneously in the valley, the work is about to begin on the third of the four high level double cantilevers. The lifting gantry, designed in the contractor's head office, is first of all positioned on top of the 30 metre high column. Meantime, over at the loading bay, to get the segments down into the valley, they have to be transferred and shackled to a railway bogey. The self-loading transporter and the bogey were designed and fabricated by Molum specially for this contract. The route of the track is down the centre line of the viaduct through the column arches. Telephone communications to the winch driver control the descent. The first segment on each side has already been set up and an in-situ concrete joint poured against the east face of the column. Once again, accuracy is vital, with any error being multiplied many times at mid-span. With the double-leaf column now carrying the first segment on each side, the third segment goes up on the west face. faces have already received a light sand blasting in the stacking yard. This and subsequent segments are added by gluing and bar stressing. Epoxy resin two-part adhesive is not mixed until the critical moment. Protective clothing is worn during the application of the resin by hand. Speed and skill in the jointing process are essential. Too slow and the glue goes off. Spread too thickly, the glue squeezes into the stressing ducts. Too thinly, the grout seal between the ducts is incomplete. The combination of McAlloy bars and 12-strand cables is stressed as erection proceeds to provide the temporary and permanent forces. First, initial stressing with McAlloy bars.
the glued joint of almost zero thickness permits immediate pre-stressing. With another segment initially stressed on the opposite side, cables are threaded to provide the cantilever stressing necessary at this stage. The development of the epoxy resin glued joint has produced the advantage of faster erection. Before it was introduced, bridge builders had to provide extensive support works and wait until the in-situ concrete had attained strength before stressing could proceed. The balanced cantilever construction method, coupled with the epoxy resin glued joint, overcomes these and other drawbacks. Keeping the cantilevers balanced involves erection at alternating ends and moving the gantry along the length of the deck so far constructed. The gantry is rotated above the column. Then winched again from end to end after every other segment to maintain the growing structure in balance. Erection of the last segment of this cantilever is in progress. This lift demonstrates once again that the balanced cantilever eliminates the need for major temporary support work. Over difficult terrain or water, the system is particularly valuable. Duct grouting operations follow closely behind the stressing. With 11 segments stressed on each side, the gantry can now be demounted and moved to the next tall column. Eventually, the double cantilevers are connected together with in situ sections and the structure completed by casting the half joints at the expansion positions. The careful control has brought the cantilever ends accurately to their meeting positions to produce a smooth alignment. Considering the problems, foreseen and unforeseen, of casting and erection, the deflections, the creep and shrinkages and other variables, this is a triumph for the intense engineering effort put in by the contractors, John Molam, and the consulting engineers, Ove Arapan Partners. Now that the cantilever ends are joined, span cables are threaded internally. The 12 strands in each cable are pulled by winch and leader wire and passed through the in situ sections of the span. Stressing these span cables is the last operation. The high level section of the viaduct is now structurally complete. Under the influence of sophisticated engineering techniques, the earliest bridge form, the beam, is once again in the forefront of bridge construction. It is felt by many that cantilever glued segmental bridges will dominate the medium span field for some time to come. In some countries this is already true, due to the economy and essential simplicity of the method. As with many innovations, it requires painstaking engineering of the highest quality. All this has been achieved for the first time in Britain on the Biker Viaduct. <laughs>